Hey, it's me, Jen again, and today I'm bringing you a patient's story with epic proportions, a huge thyroid nodule, a devastating diagnosis, an unbelievable missed opportunity, and an unbreakable ironclad human will. Vanessa describes what led her to thyroid RFA, coming up. Thanks so much for watching. If you love this channel and content, then please go ahead and subscribe. And if you'd like to get one of these adorable t-shirts and support my efforts, watch this video here and find out how. Now let's talk to Vanessa, who's no stranger to fighting for her thyroid. So, I mean, I was first diagnosed with this nodule in 2011. And at first, I mean, it was, it wasn't big. It was, you know, very tiny. It probably looked the way it looks now, which mm -hmm. is like hardly there. I've always been a runner. So I've always been like very thin. My neck was just like kind of bulky for my small frame. It was noticeable. And my mom, I was like, you know, we were having dinner and she was like, oh, you should probably check your neck. That looks like your thyroid. So I went to the doctors and he was like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's definitely your thyroid is enlarged, you know? And he was like, but don't worry. It could be hormones. It, it could be all kinds of things. So, you know, let's just do some blood work and an ultrasound and then we should be fine. Blood work was normal. Everything was fine. But then the ultrasound found this module. My right side and it measured a couple centimeters. I think it was like maybe three and four. It wasn't as big as it got. <laughs> so that was in 2011. And the first thing that they did was send me to an endocrinologist. And his first thought was like, well, let's do a biopsy and um, we'll take it from there. So at this point I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I have cancer and dying. And yeah. you know, that was the first thing that I was worried about. But then when the results came back benign, I was like, oh, well, great. I'm not dying, I'm fine. I just go on about my life. But the doctors were like, oh no, we have to take it out. And I was just like, what? <laughs> so like they said, oh, we're going to take out, you know, half of your thyroid. And if it comes out that it's actually cancer, then we'll just take the whole thing out. And I was like, wait, but you told me it was benign. But they were like, yeah, but a lot of times, you know, biopsies are, um, they come out negative, but they're actually positive. And a lot of times all these benign biopsies are actually cancer. So they're like starting to scare me about how I really, really have to <laughs> take this out. So I started doing research and I realized how important your thyroid is. I was just like, no, um, my functions are normal. I'm not going to take out my thyroid because you think that it might be cancer. And if it's not, now I don't have a thyroid. Yeah. So I went to a second opinion and the second doctor um, kind of agreed with the first one that we should just take it out and give me a little pill and I will be fine. Two doctors said this in 2011 and I refuse. I was like, you know what, I'll take my chances. Because mm -hmm. I also did a lot of research in how, you know, thyroid cancer doesn't spread. So even if it was cancer, chances are it wasn't really going to spread all over the place. It was going to be fine. So I was like, well, I'm not in any mortal danger right now. So I'm just going to leave it. One of my doctors agreed that we would just monitor and just do ultrasounds for a couple of years. But it kept growing slowly. It kept growing. And every time I had an ultrasound, it was back to that conversation. You need to see a surgeon. Let's take it out every single time. They decided to do a couple more biopsies. Everything still came out benign, but they insisted that I should take out my thyroid. Mm. This went on for several years. Um, then in 2018, I was diagnosed with MS. But at this point, my neck was just like huge. I didn't know that I was having trouble. Like my neurologist was saying, oh, your MRI is showing that, you know, your goiter, your nodule is so big that, um, you know, it's like deviating everything and you're going to choke. And <laughs> so I was like, oh, really? Because I'm fine. So my endocrinologist did a test where they put your arms up and they just kind of leave you kind of hanging there to see if you, um, if you get dizzy or if you can breathe. So like I did it and he was like, oh, well, that's interesting. You're fine. And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. So it was like really big, but somehow it was still not doing anything um, after that and the blood work still being normal and now I have a mess, I was like, I'm definitely not taking my thyroid out because chances are I'll become hypothyroid and I already have enough problems with my MS. I don't want to do that. So, you know, I, I just kept researching, researching, and then I found your account. I don't know. Uh, I think a friend of mine who actually lost her thyroid sent it to me. And then I just started doing more research, figured out RFA, and then I joined the Facebook group. You know, all the testimonies and the list of doctors. And so that's basically how it all went down. But the most interesting part is that after, you know, 
finding you and finding more about RFA, I took it back to my endocrinologist who was really pushing for surgery. And I said to him, I was like, hey, how about RFA? Um, you know, like, have you ever heard of it? And he was like, not even surprised. And I was like, oh yeah, I have a friend at the Mayo Clinic. Who does that? You knew about this and you never told me about it? And he was just like, yeah, um, yeah, I guess that would be a good option for you. That way you don't have to lose your thyroid. So he was like totally nonchalant about the whole thing. Like, even though he had kept pushing for surgery for the longest time, then he knew about RFA all along. So I was really upset. I had to do my own research, find the doctors that would take on the case. But at this point, this thing was so humongous that not many doctors were willing to go there. Then I found a doctor who did that she would take on it. Uh -huh. And um, the she decided to do it is because of my MS, because she realized how important it was for me to not have now two long-term conditions that I would be, you know, basically taking pills for the rest of my life. She decided to do it, and um, and I think it was very successful, going so much better. I didn't really notice that I was having trouble swallowing until after RFA, and then I noticed, oh, I feel so much better now. I just find it really interesting that, you know, my doctor, who is supposed to be um, helping me, knew about it all along and never thought about helping me to find this treatment. I guess it could have been tackled sooner before it got so big. In the last, probably the last two, three years is when it really, really bloomed because it was very slow growing for the longest time. And then all of a sudden I was really running out of options. My first RFA was July 2020. So you went to your doctor before that and he knew about it. So if you had been told about this like in 2019, you you might have been able to, to move forward with that before it grew. What, what was the size like in, in 2019? I think in between 2018 and 2019, it was probably like at four or five centimeters. And it grew up to seven, like 7.6. Now at this point, it, this thing was huge. And I was like really coming to terms with the fact that, oh my gosh, maybe I do have to take it out because it just keeps growing. I wish he had told me about this. I'm not really sure when they started doing this at the Mayo Clinic, but I know that it had been around for a little while. And then once it was FDA approved in 2018, then that would be a great time to try it. It's unfortunate. That's really common. I can't tell you how similar your story is to mine, except for the MS part. It's almost the same story. It's so crazy and it's not unusual. I hear so many patients say exactly what you said about how I just refused to have surgery because I just knew my thyroid was important or they had some kind of illness like you're talking about with MS that it was not a good idea for them to have surgery. So many doctors are just so casual in their attitude towards the thyroid being critical to good health. Your story is so many people's stories. So that's why I was really wanting to hear your story. And I, I just had this feeling that it was going to be very meaningful to a lot of people. So I really appreciate you sharing all that. And I'm so glad that you were able to get results from your RFA and keep your thyroid intact and your thyroid's still functioning normally now and, and you're feeling better. You said that the symptoms are better now since you've had the RFA? Yeah, absolutely. I, I Again, I didn't know that I had symptoms. I uh -huh. had no idea that there was pressure in my neck, but there definitely was. It wasn't pain. It just felt like heavy, you know, like yeah. when you're like, wearing that very tight scarf or sweater. Something was choking me and I didn't realize it until after. And I was like, oh, I feel so much lighter. I feel better now. That's great. So. I'm so glad. I guess maybe since it was gradually growing, maybe your body just had adjusted to it and you weren't aware of it. Yeah. Wow. And at the same time, I felt like, you know, MS came out as such a shock, shock to me. And I had been dealing with all kinds of other stuff that the last thing in my mind was worrying about my neck. I was more concerned about all the parts of my body that were starting to you know, act strange. So I really, when I was seeing my neurologist and he kept saying, oh, you got to do something about that thyroid. And I was like, listen, buddy, we have bigger fish to fry here. Yes. So I'm not really concerned about my thyroid right now. I got pregnant with my second child and my life got really crazy. And I was the same way. I was like, the thyroid thing is not even on my radar right now. I will deal with it later. Yeah. So I get that completely. Sometimes that's what happens, you know, if it's not bothering you, why would you rush into surgery? It's not like, oh, I'm dying. I've got to have the surgery or, um, or it's going to have this terrible consequence. You know, if you're not having symptoms and you're not dying because it's benign, then why would you rush into surgery? And so I think so many people are like, oh, wow, now I've finally got access to RFA and I have this huge mass now and 
some doctors are turning people away because they have these large masses yeah. because they, they feel like, well, it's too big to take the risk of doing RFA on it. And it's like, well, I've been waiting for this. They talk about how the smaller the nodule, the more successful RFA right. can be. And my husband was just like, well, that's ridiculous. Like you could tackle this like when it was smaller. Yeah. And they were just like, oh yeah, let's just take care of your thyroid. I mean, I saw several endocrinologists and they were all saying, don't worry about it. It's super easy. One doctor was just like, oh, well, don't worry about it. You don't even need your thyroid. All you need is like the pill and then you'll be fine. And then I was like, you're an endocrinologist and you're telling me that I don't need my thyroid. You're fired. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, good for you sticking your guns on that. You know, I think so many patients just intuitively know if it's there, it's got an important function and purpose. Why would it be there if it's not important? Your temperature, your metabolism, your muscle mass. Like I have heard from so many patients in the running community that take out their thyroid and now um, they're having a hard time going back to running because, you know, their endurance goes down, can't build muscle the way they used to. They're too tired. Uh, even when their hormones are optimal, you know, with their medication, they still don't feel normal. Mm -hmm. That just seems insane that doctors are just, you know, taking thyroid cells. <laughs> like it's a game. It's really sad. I think a lot of times when they say, oh, it's no big deal is, is likely because the surgery is pretty simple. You know, yeah. probably no big deal for them to perform the surgery. And because they're not having to live with the outcome, they probably are really not aware of just how hard it is on the patient. But I am very thankful that lately I've been hearing from a lot of doctors who are starting to come around to that understanding that no, it is, it is a bad idea to take out the thyroid unless it's absolutely necessary. And I'm only hopeful that that idea will continue to spread and more doctors will come around to realizing people need their thyroid and people who have their thyroid removed suffer a lot. And that thyroid medication is, is vital if you need it, but if you you can have your own thyroid doing its job, you're going to feel so much better. You know, I mean, unless it's really cancer or unless it's really choking you and, you know, you can't function, then I would not take it out like ever. And even when after I got RFA because of the size of it, the doctor just wanted to make sure that my expectations were clear and realistic that this might never go away. And I was like, I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, it's not just about cosmetics. So yeah, sure, your neck might look a little weird, but there are more important things than how your neck looks. I just think that unless it's really, you know, malfunctioning or really bothering you or affecting your, your life, I wouldn't just take it out for cosmetic issues. I don't know if you ever felt self-conscious about your neck. Um, yes. Shame. And, you know, when I first noticed that when my mom first pointed it out, I had never seen it, that every time I look in the mirror now, that's all I could see. And then as it started growing, that's all I could see in pictures. It was kind of depressing because I was just like, all I could see was my neck. And I was like, I'm growing a second head. Once you get over that, you realize, well, that's okay because I feel fine. And I want to continue feeling fine, even if, you know, I look a little funny. I started giving it a name. I was like, oh, I'm going to call it Quasimodo. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, you would choose to have Quasimodo over losing the thyroid and feeling like crap for the rest of your life. And with a mess, you cannot see that I have a mess. There's nothing, if you see me, you would never know it. But that actually was, and sometimes still is, cripples my mobility. And being such an avid runner, that has been more of a life-changing situation than having a goiter or a nodule or, you know, a lump on my neck. That yeah. is not that important as something else that is actually affecting you. Being able to hike and run and move, I think that's more important. And I did not want to contribute anymore symptoms or fatigue because I'm so lucky that my MS doesn't um, affect my energy. Mm. Somehow I got lucky and I was just like, well, if I'm lucky this way, I'm not going to take out my thyroid <laughs> and add it to the bag of symptoms. Yeah, it was really important to conserve my thyroid. Isn't it a big deal for you to be put to sleep when you have MS? A lot of doctors recommend that you don't have um, full anesthesia because you never know how your nervous system is going to react. Yeah. So a lot of times when you go under anesthesia, you can have like a flare up. There could be inflammation in your brain. My lesions are mostly in my spine. There is that potential risk of going into surgery and coming out with like a really bad MS flare and you don't know how that's going to affect your body. You know, it's a little risky and- Yeah, it could potentially progress the, the disease process. Yes, it okay. could progress or exacerbate and yeah. with my kind of a mess, I have like the relapsing remittent type, yeah. which sometimes I get flares and then sometimes things go back to normal after a couple of months. 
Sometimes they do not go completely back to normal. So there's always like a little remnant symptom with progressive MS. That would be even more dangerous because a lot of their damage is permanent. Like that's super risky. Um, mm-hmm. You don't want to mess with that. I, so I was super I, thankful for my doctor because I thought that was like super important for her to do that. She was so um, compassionate. I got awesome. lucky. Yeah, I think RFA, like that's one of the best things about it is for people like you and me and so many people out there who have these severe issues that should definitely not go to surgery, even if the nodule itself is maybe on the boundary of what most doctors would treat for R- with yeah. RFA, I think it's so great that this is available for those contraindicated patients because otherwise... I mean, you're looking at you're looking at some serious consequences from the surgery. Thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks <laughs> for doing everything that you do every day and for creating that Facebook. I don't know if I would have had access to RFA if I didn't find you. So, thank you. I'm so glad. I I mean, that's why I, that's why I do this. When I discovered it for myself, I was just like, this is so amazing. I can't not tell people about this. I made that very first YouTube video and. I thought, well, I don't know if anyone will ever watch this, but... But I hope more people will. And now, (laughs) every time I'm on Instagram and one of the hashtags for, you know, any thyroid disease or thyroid surgery or whatever comes up, and people are like, oh, I'm going to go get my thyroid taken out next week. And I was like, no, 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 wait, why don't you look into RFA before you do that? So now every time, like total strangers, they're probably like, why is this crazy person telling me to have surgery? And I'm always like, you better make sure that you're not a candidate before you do that because you don't want to go there. Yeah, now I go to strangers' Instagrams telling them not to get surgery. That is Um, awesome. (laughs) I love that. And I, you know, I do that too. And there's so many other patients I've, I've encountered who do the same because it's like, once they realize what a game changer this is, they want to tell the world, you know, I was just talking to somebody yesterday who had encountered a person whose daughter had had thyroid cancer. The cancer that she had was like the, the form of thyroid cancer that's Basically, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't spread. It doesn't grow. It doesn't metastasize. The The research is showing that that particular type of cancer can be safely watched and not removed. Well, this particular person who was very young had surgery and had three rounds of radioactive iodine. Now, radioactive iodine pretty much kills your ability to have children, and it, it devastates your body. It puts you at risk for blood cancers, and she lost her thyroid. When I heard this story, I was like, I was devastated that this action, such significant action was taken over this very insignificant cancer that, you know, probably would have never killed her. It's like almost like the equivalent of dropping an atomic bomb on a spider. When I know this information, I can't not share that. This girl's life was ruined. And I don't want people to to lose their quality of life if it's not necessary. And so that is why I do this. And I'm so thankful to hear that that you and all these other patients are are seeing that it's valuable and they're sharing it with other people. You know, it's it's really when it comes down to it, it's just how much do you care about people? You know, do you want them to suffer? Do you want them to have a good life? And I think that having that empathy, you know, that's what it really boils down to. Thank you for doing that. However many thyroids we can save, that's that's good yeah. enough. It's funny that you mentioned that about the cancer that, you know, doesn't spread and doesn't do anything because one of the several endocrinologists that I visited, there was one who was particularly a little more lax than the others. He didn't push for surgery so much. He was from India and he said to me, you know, a lot of times people die of old age and after people realize that they had thyroid cancer, but they didn't die of thyroid cancer. That's um, right. And he said, you know, in India, sometimes people walk around with goiters this big. He was like, you, you're just tiny compared to the things that we see in India. They're fine. He was like, you're in America, so most people don't want to walk around looking like you. But if you want to, it's fine. People do it in India all the time. Do you know so. what the statistic is on autopsy? And after that autopsy, they determined the person had thyroid cancer, but they didn't die from it. 34%, 34% of people who die from some other cause are found to have thyroid cancer on autopsy. And so they're not dying from it. People can have this and have it for years and years and years. It doesn't kill them. It's not dangerous. Now that's, that's that's certain types of thyroid cancer. Yeah. There are, there are variations that are very, 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 very rare that can cause bad things to happen. But if you do biopsies, they they can determine, you know, what form of cancer it is. The percentage of time that thyroid nodules are cancerous is like five to 10% of the time. 
the percentage of those that are malignant that are the dangerous ones is like 1% of that 5 to 10%. So it's a very small number. It's so rare. It's so unfortunate that for such a rare, tiny number of people, so many people are losing their thyroid because there's a chance that it might be cancer. Thank you for sharing your story. Is there any one-liner you would say if you had a 30-second elevator trip with somebody who was in your shoes and you were going to give them your elevator pitch, what would you say to that patient? Save your thyroid. Save your thyroid. That's, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Be like Vanessa and share this content with someone it might help. To learn more, visit the links in the description and watch this video coming up right here.